In this video, we're going to take a look at the double angle formulae. So to begin with here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to state the three results that you need to be familiar with. So that's the double angle formulae for sine, cosine, and tangent. And then from there, what I want to show is the derivation of those three results by using the addition formulae that we established in the previous video. So to begin with here, let's state the three results that you need to be familiar with. So if we start off here with sine, we have sine of 2a which we can express here as 2 sine a cosine a. So 2 sine a cosine a. Okay, so that's the first result there that you need to be familiar with. The next result here is for cosine. So cosine of 2a. Well, we can express this here as cosine a squared, or cos squared a, I should say. So cos squared a. Then we minus sine squared a, like so. And that means we can also express this here as 2 cos squared a minus 1. And we can also express this here as 1 minus 2 sine squared a. Okay. So like you can see here, the result then for cosine of 2a, so the double angle formula for cosine is quite versatile. We can express that in a number of different ways. And then finally here, the double angle formula for tangent. So tan of 2a. Well, we can express that here as 2 tan a. So 2 tan a, and we divide this here by 1 minus tan squared a. Okay. What I want to show now is how we derive each one of these results by using the addition formula that we established in the previous video. So let's begin with them. If we want to look here at sine 2a, then we can express this here as sine of a plus a. Okay. That would give me sine of 2a. Okay, once we simplify this bracket here. So using the addition formula then from the previous video. That means we can express this here now as sine a cos a. So sine a cos a. And then we add cosine a sine a. Now obviously the order of multiplication here doesn't matter. But basically what I've got here is sine a cos a or sine a cos a. So in that case then what I've simply got here is 2 sine a cos a. Okay, we just add these together here, it's just two lots of sine a cos a. Okay, like you can see then it gives us the result here, so that's the first of our three results, um, or basically the derivation of the first of our three results there. So now let's take a look here at cosine 2a. Now for cosine here of 2a, well to begin with we follow a similar pattern to what we did here. I'm now going to express this here as cosine a plus a, okay. But there's a bit more work involved here. So again, just like we did for sine of a plus a, just using the addition formula from the previous video, that means I can then express this here as cosine a, so cos a times cos a, and then we minus here sine a times sine a, okay. So in that case then, this would simplify to be cosine a squared, or cos squared a. We get cos squared a, and then obviously sine a times sine a, again, that would be sine squared a. So we get minus sine squared a there. Now, to get these next two results here, then we need to think about um, the identities here that we established in the first year of study for our trig identities. So, if we now use sine squared a plus cos squared a equal to 1, then in that case, then I can rearrange this here and make sine squared a the subject and cos squared a the subject. So, if we make sine squared a the subject first, that means sine squared a is equal to 1 minus cos squared a 
What we've also got here, if I make cosquery the subject, or cosquery the subject, and that would be one minus sine squared a. Okay, so one minus sine squared a. So hopefully that should make sense just using the identities from the first year of study for trig identities. So now all I'm going to do here is substitute each one of these into this expression here. Okay, so therefore you can also express cosine of a plus a as cos squared a minus sine squared a, where sine squared a is 1 minus cos squared a. That's cos squared a minus sine squared a, which is 1 minus cos squared a. So we simplify this here. What I basically got then is cos squared a. Got cos squared a minus 1. And then minus minus cos squared a, that would give me positive cos squared a. If I simplify that here, then I simply get 2 cos squared a minus 1 there. Okay. So notice we get this result here. But all I need to do now is just substitute um, this result here for 1 minus sine squared a, my expression here. So just replacing the cos squared a with 1 minus sine squared a. Again, we can just show that cosine of a plus a will be equal to cosine squared a here, which is 1 minus sine squared a. And where was we here? So cosine of a plus a. Like we said, I've just replaced now. Um, where was we? Lost myself here. I've replaced my cosine squared a here, 1 minus sine squared a. Then don't forget we've got the minus sine squared a here as well. Okay, so I've got that much working at the bottom here. Getting lost, but 1 minus sine squared a minus another sine squared a would simplify to give me 1 minus 2 sine squared a there. Okay, so notice that's the other original result there that we need for cosine of 2a. So finally, then all we've got to show here is the derivation for tan 2a. So what you can see, there's that much work here at the bottom. We've run out of room. So what I'm going to do then is just quickly clear this. So do take a note of these results here. If you haven't already, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to erase this top line here. The result for tan 2a is quite nice and straightforward. We should have enough room here, I think, to do this. So let's take a look at this then. So for tan 2a, again, using the addition formula that we established in the previous video, then tan of a plus a. Well, using the addition formula, then we can express this here as tan a plus tan a. This will all be divided here by 1 minus tan a times itself again tan a. So we just simplify this here and clean it up. Tan a plus tan a that gives me two lots of tan a. And then if we divide here by 1 minus tan a times itself again tan a, and this is 1 minus tan squared a there. Okay. And there we have it. So we finally got to the end there. Like it's the derivation for sine 2a, cosine 2a, and finally tan 2a there. Okay. And there we have it. So that brings the end of this video on the double angle formulae. So in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at solving trig equations that involve the double angle formulae.